going on. We're doing problem 1413 from the fundamentals of chapter 14. And now we're on to the conservation of energy. Uh, this is probably the, one of the more important topics you'll be covering in dynamics as you go forward. And basically what we're trying to do is like what's the state or what's the energy or I guess total energy uh, total energy of state of the system at state one, all right, or position one, and that has to be that has to be equal to the total uh, total energy of the system at state two, all right. Very similar to the very first few problems we were doing in like the first section, where we were taking into account, um, you know the what's the the total energy or the the, the, the potential uh, done by a non-conservative or by a conservative and non-conservative force and then we summed up all these uh, potentials when as it gets a little easier now um, we know kinetic energy is just one half mv squared we know the potential energy by gravity is just um, you know the weight times some change in height or so, your y position I guess okay we also know that potential energy by a spring is one half k um, I'm gonna say delta L squared okay and um, and yeah, so for this problem, we're going to be focusing on these three things, right? Um, what this allows us to do is say, okay, let's let's write down the state, the energies of state one. You know, that's at, or I guess uh, at state A or at position A, okay? And we're you're gonna have to be setting your datum or your zero potential and typically I set my zero potential at the floor right so this is y equals zero okay so when I when I begin to sum up the total energy of state one or the at position a, a I'm gonna take into account alright what is my potential energy there well I know it's gonna be m g y one plus all the other energies at state A, okay, which is going to be, okay, what is the velocity or the kinetic energy? Okay, and there's no spring, so we don't have to add anything else, and no friction or anything like that, okay? So this total energy has to be equal to the potential at state 2 plus the kinetic energy at state 2 which is at position B okay so let's look at the problem statement 2 kilogram pendulum bobs released from rest okay so if it's released from rest at A initially it has zero kinetic energy alright so this term goes to zero alright and then uh, what else? Determine the speed of the bob and the tension in the cord when the bob passes through its lowest position B. Alright, what is, if I, I declared my zero potential, y equals zero, at state, at point B, alright, which means y2 is zero, okay, which means the potential at state B is zero, okay, so all I'm left with is the potential at position A, sorry, this should be A, let's make it organized, equals the kinetic energy at position B. Okay? And that and that's once once you get the hang of this, it, these problems are gonna be a piece of you know a piece of cake. So it's gonna be two times nine point eight one. So let's let's do that. So that's two times nine point eight one. What's the position, or the the y position of 
a or the height well it's just going to be this right the radius of this pendulum 1.5 right 1.5 okay equals one half times two db squared and we're looking for this guy over here all right so let's say that goes away and we're left with v b is let's see doing it out we get 5.42 meters per second okay so we need this in order to determine the tension of the, of the pendulum at position b okay so let's look at so now we now we're going to move into the we're moving into a, a little bit of the chapter 13 problems that we we're doing where you're in the normal and tangential coordinate system so you're here now right what are the forces that are acting on the pendulum or the or the bob right i have the weight i have tension which i'm looking for right all right this would be the the t and this is the the normal direction okay so if i say okay sum the forces in this in the normal in the normal direction that's equal to a m sub n which we know that the mass times acceleration we have to rewrite the acceleration as v squared over r okay because remember that's just the, the normal acceleration when you're traveling in a circular path and then what do we have for the forces we have t minus the weight equals mass times v squared over r okay this becomes t is equal to right and then this v is b right the velocity at position b and that's what we needed to find it okay so from here just plug plug your numbers plug and chug and we're gonna end up with 58.8 newtons all right so just doing a little recap um, this this part of the, the chapter introduces uh, conservation of energy meaning the to the sum of all the types of energy at state uh, state one has to equal to the total the total sum of all the energy the state two okay and it is ma mainly for uh, when we're dealing with uh, what's it called uh, things that have a conservative force meaning uh, conservative forces are path independent doesn't matter um, how A got to B, you know, A could have got taken this path womp, 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 and gone to B, and the total change in uh, Y position uh, is still going to be the same. It's Y final minus Y initial, right? So it didn't matter that it took this long path to get there, okay? Now, the book introduces the non conservative force. And that's most of the time we're going to be dealing with friction in that case. So if you, and that's because friction is path dependent because the longer you take to get from A to B, the longer friction acts on that object, the more friction losses you you generate. Okay, so that's why um, we'll we'll deal with that um, when we when we introduce the non-conservative forces. If you have questions, comments, concerns, just drop them down below. I'm always uh, willing to answer and, and uh, I'll get back to you guys in a reasonable amount of time and uh, yeah thanks for your time guys I'll see you in the next video